and bosses. Hope you're all okay. Thank you very much for all the lovely comments that you leave on my videos. And I know a lot of you have been asking me to make a video about the seven keyword slots or keyword boxes in the back end of Amazon KDP. So here goes. Here's my video on how I use my keywords in the back end of Amazon KDP. So first of all, what is a keyword and what what are keywords? Should we use long tail keywords? Should we use short tail keywords? Should we use phrases or words? There are so many questions people have when it comes to keywords. And really, it's not complicated at all. Keywords are just the words that people use to find your books. So when you're looking to buy something on Amazon and you go on the Amazon website, you type in what you're looking for in the search box. And anything that you type into the search box, those are keywords. So if you're looking for a computer, you type in computer. If you're looking for an iPhone, you type in iPhone. If you're looking for a notebook, you type in notebook. And that is a very simple way of searching. But obviously, sometimes people are looking for something a little bit more specific. And maybe they're looking for an iPhone 10, or maybe they're looking for a PC for gamers, or maybe they're looking for a notebook for teachers. You know, so there are ways that people are typing in keywords that helps them find what they're looking for. So what do you have to do as a seller on Amazon, as, as a KDP seller, you kind of have to guess what those words will be. You have to think like a buyer on Amazon and you have to put yourself in the shoes of the person who's going to buy your books. So what do you think they will type into, into Amazon to find your book and not the competitors books. So of course, Amazon will show them quite a lot of books. So you really want to make sure that your keywords are really relevant to your book. How do I do this? Well, I use relevant keywords. I use uh, keywords that really describe what my book is. And I don't use irrelevant keywords. So let me give you some examples. Imagine that you are creating a teacher appreciation notebook for a music teacher. So you would have music teacher appreciation notebook in your title. And I will make another video just on titles and on subtitles just to make it very clear. But for now, we're dealing with the keywords that you put into the back end of Amazon. So you've got your title. Imagine it's music teacher notebook or music teacher appreciation notebook. Let's type it in here anyway. So if it's in your title, then you wouldn't put it here. But if your title is something different, then you can put that in the back end. And then we would also put composition book because a notebook is very similar to a composition book. So that doesn't fit in there. So I'll, I'll just carry on to the next box and put book in there. So if, if a keyword doesn't fit, like composition book doesn't fit in one box, then I'll just carry on to the next one and put book in there. And then I continue with maybe journal. Journal is okay to use because a lined notebook can also be a journal. You can do journaling with a lined notebook. What I wouldn't do is use words like planner because this isn't a planner. This is just a lined notebook. And if you put in planner in the keywords, and someone is looking for a planner and comes across your notebook, they're not going to buy it because they were looking for a planner. So be very specific with your keywords. So what else can we say? It can be a gift, a gift idea. In the UK, we say present more than gift. So I also put that in. It's always good to have alternative words. So gift idea, present, for, and then you can say, for when you can give this as a present for birthday, for Christmas, doesn't, doesn't fit in there. So I go to the next one 
for end of term, that's a good time to give a teacher a present, or it could be the start of term. So I don't repeat of term, I just put in start. If you prefer, I can do it like this, end or start of term, because there is no point in repeating keywords. It's best not to have repeated keywords. So then what else can we say? It can be for women, can be for men, it can be for taking notes. So also describe what you can use this for. You can use it for writing, you can use it for journaling. Um, what else can we say? Notebooks are always a little bit tricky because there's not a lot you can say about a notebook. So you really have to concentrate on who this is for. So this one is targeted at music teachers. So we've already got that in our first, in our first line, music teacher appreciation notebook, composition book, journal, gift idea, present for birthday. I can't think of any other times that you can give this as a gift. Um, you wouldn't give this as a Father's Day present or Mother's Day present, so I'm not putting that in. Um, what else can we say? It's for writing in. If you can't think of what else you can say about the people that this is designed for, then talk about the cover. For example, if you're making a notebook for a music teacher and you're using an image or a photo of a piano, then type this into your keywords as well, because sometimes people are looking for things that they like. If someone likes a piano notebook or a, or if you've got a violin on the cover or anything like that, put that on there as well. You know, say something about the cover. Um, you can say something about the type of book this is, but again, a notebook doesn't really give you much options. If this was a planner or a diary, you can say a lot more about it because you can say if it's a monthly planner, daily planner, weekly planner. Notebook is a, is a tricky one to find keywords for. So you really need to target either the person this is for or the niche or say something about the cover. What else can we say? Well, sometimes an appreciation gift is also called a thank you gift. So we can put thank you here. So we don't have to repeat the word gift because that's already in this box here. So Amazon will just pick the words that are relevant. So if somebody types in thank you gift for teacher, it will come up because you've got those words in your back end. It doesn't matter what order they are in. I know that Amazon says it's better to put them in the right order. I haven't noticed that it makes any difference what order the keywords are in because I think that the algorithm just picks the keywords whichever way they are presented in the search box. So don't worry about the order. Just put in the words that you can think of and if you want to have a long tail keyword like music teacher appreciation notebook, that's fine, but you can add to it as well. You can put, you don't have to have each one in one box. I have tried this. I have put books up where I've written down, for example, music teacher appreciation notebook. And then I've gone on to the next one to do another long tail keyword, like for example, end of term gift for music teacher. I've tried all that and I really haven't noticed any difference in sales. It's the same. As long as your keywords are in the back end, that is all that matters. Doesn't matter if you do it like this, like a long term keyword, or if you just mix up all the keywords and put as many keywords in one box as you can. It really doesn't matter. What I do is I do both. Sometimes I do half and half. Sometimes I do long tail keywords. Sometimes I just do individual words and mix them all up. So I just find that it doesn't make any difference which way you do it. As long as you have the right words, the right keywords, they have to be relevant. There is no point in having something like cool, beautiful. People don't type in cool gifts or beautiful gifts. But what they do type in is fun gift or funny 
gift or gag gift. So if your book is funny or humorous, then you can type that in as well. Some people are making quite a lot of money with sweary books. They have curse words in it, so you could write that. Uh, as a keyword because some people are actually looking for things like that or rude for example so some people are looking for those type of words and that is really all I can say about your keywords for a notebook if you have another type of book it gets a little bit easier because then you can say more things for example if you have a hair salon appointment book Let's type that in. What can you have in the boxes? You can have logbook because it is a logbook. You're logging your appointment times. It can be a gift, a present. So it's a gift idea for who can it be for? For a hairdresser, for a barber, for a small business, oops, for self employed hairdressers for hair stylists for mobile hairdressers mobile hairdressers are people that come to your house and cut your hair so a lot of them they like to have appointment books that they can carry with them so i always make them a little bit smaller than the normal appointment books here's a tip make them small so that they can carry them in their bags and what else can we say oh hairdressers usually have either one person working at the salon or two people or three people four people depending on the size of the salon sometimes they need more columns for the number of assistants so you can have a an appointment book for two assistants or columns sometimes they call it columns or if you've got three then change the two for three four five this is another idea for a niche if you're making hairdressing salon appointment books you can make quite a few because you can make them for two assistants for three assistants for four assistants and so on so that's another keyword for you so you can also date it you can call it 2021 and you can say if it's monthly weekly daily and then it's a planner and it's a planner so what else can it be it can be an organizer what does it organize it can organize a schedule so that's a valid keyword because some people might type into Amazon uh, appointment book to organize schedule so that would pick it up and the other thing you can do is to describe the cover because especially hairdressing salons sometimes have color schemes some hairdressing salons you go in and everything is black and white some of them like to have everything red you know so if they have a nice color scheme they like to match their notebooks or whatever they're using to that color scheme so for example if you've got a red cover type that in red cover or if it's black and white type in black and white cover so you can say something about the cover what i wouldn't use keywords that i wouldn't use are things like notebook because this isn't a notebook and i wouldn't use things like beautiful or amazing because they're irrelevant. No one is going to type in amazing hair salon appointment book. You know, people just type in hair salon appointment book or salon appointment book, you know, so you have to target your keywords, but it's really not complicated. And the other thing is, if you can't think of any more keywords, leave it blank. There's no point in putting as many keywords in as you can. It's, it's not necessary. As long as you target the really important keywords that is all that you need to do so just to recap quickly um, I would say do you use long tail or short tail keywords it doesn't matter I don't think it makes a difference I use both so use whatever you feel is best for your particular book 
The other thing is avoid repeating words. Don't repeat words. Let's see if we've got any repetition here. Hair salon. I think hair might be repeated. There we are. So we've got hair here and hair there. So we can get rid of one. As long as it's in there once, that's enough. And the other tip is don't worry if you can't use all of the spaces. Less keywords is better than irrelevant keywords because the only thing that irrelevant keywords do is they make people get fed up with your with your product and they don't they don't look at it because if they're looking for a planner and you've got planner in your keywords but it's really a notebook and they see the notebook what are they going to do they're going to click onto the next page or onto the next product they're not going to buy your product because that's not what they were looking for so make your keywords exactly what people are looking for. So I hope this has helped and I will make another video just on titles and subtitles. I hope that explains it a little bit better. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and answer them as quickly as possible. Also, if you want to join our Facebook group, the Home Boss group, you're very welcome and we discuss all sorts of things there and I try and answer as many questions as I can. And what else can I tell you? Well, first of all, thank you so much for watching my channel. I hope you subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel <laughs> and click the notification bell so that you receive updates for my next video. I will do videos every week from now on. So I hope to see you soon and thank you very much. Bye bye.